Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, so in this video I'll be covering all the tools that I didn't cover in my previous videos uh, that I did. Uh, this little series on all the Cinema 4D tools. Uh, so if you want to go back and check out my main uh, tools that I covered like, you know, the inner extrude, extrude bevel, uh, loop cutting and so on, you can check those videos out. But in this video I'll be covering all the uh, secondary tools in Cinema 4D uh, that not a lot of people cover. Uh, so I'll be showing you how to use the bridge tool, uh, the mirror tool, uh, we have the matrix extrude, smooth shift, and we have um, clone, which is kind of useful, and then we have disconnect and split, which is kind of, you know, real simple. It just splits your faces or disconnects your faces. I'll show you that. Uh, so let me just go one by one real quick, not to make this too long. Uh, so the first one is the bridge tool. Uh, so what you can do, it works the same way as the uh, polygon pen tool. So let me just copy this cube over and maybe rotate it a little bit like this. And also I'm going to connect these two objects by uh, doing connect object plus delete command. So you have one object and I'm going to go in my face mode, delete these faces. Uh, so the bridge tool does the same as the polygon pen tool. If you hold command on your edge and drag it to another edge, uh, yeah, it bridges together, uh, but that's using the polygon pen tool. And if you're not a fan of this tool, then you can obviously do the bridge tool, which does the same thing. So it doesn't work in your face mode, just keep that in mind. Just go in your um, edge mode, and as you can see, it gives you this little highlight on your edges. So just click on the edge, and then drag it over to uh, the edge you want to bridge it to. So just like this, you can create uh, your faces by dragging from one edge to another and patch in holes or uh, the distance between objects and so on. And uh, as you can see, it gives us a nice and clean result. It's very really useful. So let me just, so that's the bridge tool. That's the, you know, that's how it's used really easy. So let me just show you one more time. When you have a gap in between your edges, you can just go to the bridge tool, go to your edge mode, click on your edge, and drag it to the edge you want to bridge it to, let go, and it bridges the whole thing and welds all the points together. So it's really useful for patching holes and so on. Anyway, let me just delete that. Uh, so the next tool is the mirror tool. It's same as the symmetrical uh, symmetry object, uh, which is this right here. Uh, but uh, the mirror tool is a permanent solution, so you don't get to undo any, any changes. So let me just make this edit tool and show you real quick. So what I'm going to do is make a cut in the middle of the cube. And I'm going to center the cut by 50%, so it's right in the middle. And then I'm going to go on my top view and just delete half of my cube, just like this. And now I'm going to mirror uh, that same side over. So as you can see right now, we're missing a side. If I go to my perspective mode, as you can see. So the mirror tool does just that. It pretty much takes whatever you have on one side and uh, mirrors over to the other side. So right now in my top view, I'm gonna highlight all the faces under my face mode. And I'm gonna click on my mirror tool, which is this. And you have a few options here, but basically you can choose, you know, coordinate, coordinate system, which is world, screen, and so on. I usually stick to world because it lets me uh, choose uh, the mirror plane, which is Z, Y, X, Y, and so on. So right now it's ZY, and let's see what happens. And there you go, it mirrors, mirrors it over to the other side and welds all the points together. And same thing if it was XY, as you can see, it mirrors to the other side. And if it was XZ, it just mirrors to the same uh, planes, and that's why you can't really see anything. So let me just switch to XY, or is it, or oh, ZY. And we get perfect, let me just jump to perspective mode. And we get a perfect um, mirror of the, you know, the other side of our object that I deleted. So it's like a permanent solution for a symmetrical object. Uh, so if you want to use it, you can. But if not, if you want to be safe, uh, just stick to symmetry object. And that way you can undo and redo and so on and keep uh, working on two sides instead of, um, I mean, keep working on one side and the other side will get the same results. So as you can see, even though I mirrored it, if I extrude, other side doesn't get the same extrude, but if you do it in the symmetrical mode or the symmetry object, uh, it will copy whatever you do on one side, so it makes it easier to model. 
Anyway, uh, the next tool, so we covered the bridge tool, the mirror tool, let's keep going down the list. Okay, so we have the um, smooth shift. It's really it's really simple. So it works in the uh, face mode. A way, a way you can do is uh, select two faces and do smooth shift and you get this kind of effect. Uh, so it patches uh, all the holes in between uh, the two uh, faces pretty much and it creates this extra uh, geometry. Uh, you know, some cases uh, I haven't really found, you know, a useful way of using this tool. I usually just extrude, inner extrude and, you know, use the basic tools. Uh, but this can be useful. So as you can see, you can uh, control the offset like this, uh, the subdivisions, and we have the angle, which is 90 degrees and so on. And uh, there's not that many options here. But basically, you just, let me see if it works with three faces. Uh, let me select the smooth shift. And yes, it does. So as you can see, you can get a nice uh, bevels in between your faces. Uh, so it's really nice. You know, creates the extra geometry and keeps it clean. Uh, so for example, if your inner extrude or extrude is not working properly, you can always use the smooth shift tool and uh, get this kind of result, which is pretty cool. Maybe useful. Maybe I'm gonna start using it from now on. I just haven't found. You know, I just stick to the basics most of the time. Uh, but this tool is obviously pretty cool. Uh, anyway, so for that tool, that's all it is. Uh, it just makes these uh, inserts in between your faces. And let me see, uh, matrix extrude tool, really cool too. Uh, so what you can do is uh, pretty much create roundings. Uh, so you clone and extrude at the same time. Uh, so let me just show you if you if you highlight your uh, face and do matrix extrude, which is MX, as you can see. And uh, from here, you can just do apply. Uh, because all the stuff that happens is live. So now you can add, as you can see, uh, your steps or subdivisions. And we have these rotation going on. So let me just zero that out. Put everything to zero. Oh, I, I hate when that happens when it keeps... Let me, see, let me just undo and do it again. So we do matrix extrude. Click, apply. And let me just zero this out. As you can see, we have something like this, and uh, you have all kinds of options here. So you can start moving them around like this. You can uh, scale it. Let me just do apply one more time. Uh, you can scale it up and down, as you can see. Uh, you can rotate it. And uh, this tool comes in handy when you want to create like roundings. So for example, let me just undo. So for example, uh, pretend this cube is a railing and you want this this face to be uh, going like uh, you know 90 degrees and at the same time rounding uh, to connect into the wall for example uh, so what you can do is uh, zero everything out put scale all 200 percent like this so as you can see we have something like this and from there you can start rounding so as you can see, you can get this kind of rounding going on, and it really gives you a clean result. Uh, but the only problem is uh, you get this little rounding next to your edge. That's a problem. Uh, so what you can do with that is move your um, axes to the side a little bit, like this. And then do the same thing, matrix extrude. And uh, from there, you can you know use the move tools to really... Oops. Keep doing Command Z, but I guess it doesn't like it. Yeah, as you can see, you have to play around with the uh, X, X, Y, and Z uh, move tools inside the matrix extrude, and you can get a nice rounding like this. And you can play with the subdivisions, as you can see, and it's, everything is happening live, and you can really get nice results and uh, get full control. I don't really use this tool that much. I just like it to do it manually for some reason, but you know, this is really useful for creating uh, roundings and all kinds of goofy effects, as you can see, you know, scaling and so on. Uh, but anyway, that's that's about it for this tool. It's pretty much extrudes and uh, clones at the same clones at the same time. Uh, so let me just undo that. Uh, so what do we have next? So we did the smooth shift matrix extrude. Uh, oh, the clone. The cloning is really cool as well. 
So let me just undo all this and bring in, for example, a cylinder, make it editable. And let me just scale it down. And let's create, for example, some kind of uh, light, light fixture. So let me just cut it in the middle here like this, 50%. And then we can optimize the whole thing. And then I'm going to select this edge right here, the top edge. And I'm just going to bevel it. So we get something like this. So let me just bump the subdivisions, maybe three. And also, let me just inner extrude the middle faces. So just pretend this is like a light fixture that you have. Uh, so obviously you can use MoGraph Cloner, which is not a permanent solution. And you can clone this object as many times as you want. Uh, but the clone tool inside the modeling is, uh, is a permanent solution. So what you can do is select all the faces and go to clone. You get this uh, window here. Uh, so you can specify how many clones you want. So for example, I want five clones. I'm going to go in Z direction, and I want 50 centimeters offset from each one, and then just hit apply. As you can see, oh, well, the 50 centimeters wasn't enough, so let me just bump it up to 500 to space them out, and there you go. So what you can do is pretty much clone uh, your uh, object, but it keeps the uh, cylinder um, the same. You know, it doesn't add any. Uh, different object to your uh, to your scene. It keeps it under the same object, uh, but you have all this all these spaces to now work with. So not only you have one uh, this light fixture, whatever you have a couple of them, and it's a permanent solution. Obviously, you cannot undo it. Uh, so you can stick with the cloner, and uh, you know copy your cylinder, or whatever the object you have, and then you can anytime you can undo it or make changes. Uh, but the cloning inside the tool palette of the modeling is a permanent solution solution so just keep that in mind yeah that's about it for cloning so you can obviously clone y z direction the number of clones uh, you can play around with the scale so let me just go one more time inside these I like to collapse let me see where's the clone uh, clone here so you can do uh, rotation you can do scale and so on you can play around uh, with that kind of stuff and, and you know it can give you some nice results but I usually stick to MoGraph cloner because it's not a permanent solution so I can always undo redo make changes and so on uh, so this comes in handy sometimes uh, but you know just I would say stick to MoGraph cloner uh, and uh, use that one instead let me just get a little drink here Alright, so let's see what we have next here. So I did cloning, um, splitting, and disconnect. So the split and disconnect is really kind of like self explanatory. So, you know, if you select your faces and you try moving them, obviously it doesn't let you move it, it just moves and uh, connects to the other faces or the other edges that it was connected to. Uh, but if you do right click, and uh, split as you can see it creates another uh, variation of that face so now I have a copy so now I have a copy of the whatever I selected from the same object and it makes another object so I have cylinder which is this and a cylinder one which is the faces I selected so it comes in handy sometimes you know you don't want to remake all the stuff that you, uh, you made uh, when you're modeling and uh, you can just highlight all the faces and do split and uh, it will make a copy of whatever you selected so let me just do it one more time jump inside as you can see right now if I want to for example you know make something else out of these faces I can split it so just do highlight the, whatever you want to highlight split it makes a copy go to the object mode you know pull it up go back to the face mode Select all your faces, hold command, and extrude it. And as you can see, we get two, uh, two different objects now 
and you can continue modeling, creating, and splitting even more. So for example, if I want to do UL, and select these faces, split again, we create a cylinder 2, go to the object mode, pull it up, maybe make it smaller, and as you can see, you can keep splitting, you can keep creating uh, different things. Obviously, you can create all this using the inner extrude and extrude, uh, but splitting comes in handy sometimes to keep track of all this stuff so it's not permanent, and you have uh, your object and sections, and it makes it easier for you to uh, always come back and rename all the objects and, you know, uh, keep your geometry clean and always, you know, if you don't want this, for example, you can always delete it and it's, uh, it's easier than have it as one object. So that's pretty much, uh, you know, splitting. It's really easy. And uh, the same thing, let me just undo all these changes. Undo, undo. So instead of splitting, you can disconnect and uh, does the same thing, but this time actually disconnects. So as you can see, if I pull on the Y, everything's connected. But if I now do right click and do disconnect and pull it up, so it pretty much takes whatever you selected, disconnect from your original model, and uh, you have this kind of uh, uh, solution. So we can do with this. Maybe you want to, you know, rotate it a little bit, and then scale it down, so on. And then from there, you can, uh, so as you can see, you can create, you know, geometry that way. You can split it or disconnect it and so on. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, this series covered all the different tools. So just go back to my previous videos if you want to see those tools. But I just, I just wanted to make this last video covering all the other tools that I didn't cover in my videos one by one. Uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Leave it a like if this video helped you. And uh, hopefully you learn something uh, by, by watching or you know, duplicating what I'm doing. Anyway, have a good day, and I'll see you in my next video, guys.